Welcome back to Flint Creek Transport. My name is Justin. Check out this snow. It's lovely, beautiful, right? And one of these snows that's very, very light and fluffy, like you can literally blow it. It's, it's just super fluffy. And it also is one of those snows that reminds you not to open your door too fast because when you open your door too fast, look what happens. Ah, oh, it's a mess. Likes to hang up in there and you open the door, it just sucks it right in. You get to ride around with a wet butt all day. Here I get to show you a little bit of uh, what's happening outside. Here's truck 149. This is that Peterbilt dump truck I got a little while ago. Anyway, he's getting ready to dump some stone. We're just putting a couple loads in here to make this a little bit wider. Eventually, hopefully, where this is where a new wash bay goes. We have already have the spot all picked out. So if you guys see his latches, I don't know if you've seen it a little bit earlier here, the latch went open. That's all air operated. So that pops open and uh, Obviously now, box is going up. Got a couple hundred pounds up there. Uh, so, backing up here a little bit. This fabric we put down. So as you can see here in New York, we get a serious freeze-thaw cycle. So this fabric, it's just like a, it's very heavy duty, almost like a weed fabric, but much heavier duty. It lets the water down through, it's porous, but it just helps stabilize everything. When you're putting in a driveway, Typically, you put this fabric down and uh, it helps stabilize it. So we get a freeze-thaw cycle and that really helps. In the springtime, when, it's, when the frost starts coming out of the ground, it can get a little bit wavy and that fabric helps lock it in. Pretty much everything we do here has got fabric. And then the other thing we do is we have, you know, we're putting it here about eight to 10 inches thick and then we top dress it with another four to six inches of say a finer gravel like what you see um, here so this is like a two inch crusher run and then here that's their four inch crusher run and the life of a dump truck driver is pretty basic um, it's a lot of fun you know I ran dump truck for quite a few years I ran that old T800 um, it was yeah, back into places the you know, it, it is easy work, but it's very challenging work because you got you got to go into a lot of different places, a lot of tight places. People want you to dump in certain spots, so it gets very challenging. Beautiful, crispy Monday morning, sun shining. Uh, this morning was probably about 15, somewhere 15 to 18 degrees with a nice stiff wind. So yes, it was cold. Um, you can see all the trucks are gone. And one of the things that we do, I should say all the trucks, there's two here, but one of the things that we do when it's cold like this, especially over the weekend, actually it's my son comes in Monday morning early and he will get all the trucks fired up, get everything fired up and running, idling. So that way when the driver gets here, the truck is warm. Uh, obviously he's he comes in early, but some of the guys leave even earlier than what he, when he comes in. But for the most part, he'll try to get some of the trucks started for the guys. It just makes everything smoother and go, go smoother. And then if a guy has a problem, he can always be here to help him. And uh, in the meantime, after he gets everything fired up, he's just hanging out in the shop, 
getting stuff taken care of in there. And then if something happens, something's froze up or whatever, someone's here to help them out. So pretty much every morning we have a guy here early to help out with issues. So that makes everything run smoother in the morning. Sometimes if you don't, um, it just one thing can lead to another and it can be a mess, Monday morning mess for sure. So that's all part of learning how to deal with the cold. Um, it's not fun by all means, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And uh, the cold and the snow is what keeps our trucks rolling as well. So right now we're running a lot of salt and cold and snow is a good thing. But let me tell you, come March, we get pretty tired of snow up here. Well, good morning guys. Kind of a rainy, drizzly type day. So hopefully my uh, lens stays clear here. Oh, you know what? I see a little bit on there. All right, guys, if you remember, I was talking about this trailer that we rented out. Uh, so this is kind of just for your info, right? We put a tarp on it and I'm just gonna open this up and show you. So here you can see the tarp, right? We had to put in those bows. Um, there's a couple different bows in there that we put in. We had to kind of put that uh, cap on the top to make it arched. So that way the water drains off. And then there's a pipe down the middle. And I'm gonna open the tarp. So the way you open these, this tarp is you can open this one from the ground. This one has a handle right here, right? And uh, you just uh, unlatch it and crank it open from the back. So I'll open it a little bit here and show you guys. So there gives you a little idea um, what it looks like. So you can see the bows we put in. That gives you a little idea of this trailer, right? So now I think this thing's pretty much ready to go. There's truck 144. Somebody have bent the bumper. <laughs> so anyway, we have another one coming and we haven't been using it. I was like, yeah, if we need it this winter, we're gonna, we're gonna utilize it. But so far we haven't really been needing it. So that's why I got the buckets up there. And it's kind of sitting off to the side. Here's all our spiders that we got. Uh, these are the all the newer spiders. These are basically, I think, go from the newest, maybe. Actually, I can tell you. So 818 is the oldest, 819, and then 821. So we kind of keep these, we try to keep at least when they're new like this or fairly new, we keep them off the roads in the winter because they will, you just tend to get rusted out a lot quicker. We have the older ones that we use for wintertime stuff and they're parked right over there. I just wanted to tell you how awesome our drivers are. So here's a bumper, right? And you can see it's been bent pretty bad. It got, uh, it got dinged up pretty good. This was more than just a snowbank. So this was coming off of a scale as a guy took a corner, came off the scales, hit it, took the corner a little bit too sharp and bent the bumper, push it up. And I don't know if it scraped the axle. I didn't get to look at the truck when it was here, but the reason I'm kind of saying our drivers are awesome is because the driver come to me like the next day and apologized, right? When drivers come and tell me, hey, you know what? We screwed up, we made a mistake. It, it helps the process so much because now, you know, let's say he hit more, let's say he hit something worse or damaged something under the truck or whatever else and says, oh, I just hit a snow bank or, you know, not honest with us it could be something a whole lot more and even more dangerous. So 
I love it when guys are honest. So just a shout out to our drivers. And this happened many times. I've had drivers come to me and say, hey, you know what? We're sorry. We messed up. You know, it could be a big accident, a little accident. And there's one thing that I always tell them is just make sure, just make sure that you learn not to do the same mistake twice. So that's, that's the key. That's what, um, you know, we're all going to make mistakes. But if we make it like multiple times, that's when I'm like, hey, we got to do something different here, right? So anyway, on to the day. It is a beautiful morning, but it is brutally cold. It's like 10 degrees. So the lesson on a bumper is just be honest. If you screw up, hey, I'm sorry, here's what happened. And uh, that gives us a real good idea what, go, what went on and what to check. Struck 139. All right, guys, I'll show you a little bit what's going on here in the shop. Uh, if you guys remember truck 151, this one is a truck that we bought out of Pennsylvania or Jersey. Actually, it's Pennsylvania. But we did not put a wet line on this truck. So this truck is primarily flatbed. And uh, so right now, there's not that much flatbed stuff going on. So we got it in the shop and are working on it. The floor was getting pretty nasty, pretty tore up. So they got a new floor, put a new floor in, getting everything cleaned up in here and uh, just getting prepped for springtime. So here in the wintertime, this is when we like to do a lot of these projects. Uh, just get some of these odds and ends done, cleaned up and get some of these trucks, you know, keeping them maintained nice. So that's this one. Uh, this rig is in for, I think some lighting. I'll tell you the salt and brine on the roads right now just makes wiring a mess. So they have to do a very careful, good job with wiring. And uh, I know this one was, the lights were blinking a little bit. And this rig is getting a service. Morning. Morning. And this is the project. So this one's still getting torn apart. Morning, buddy. Uh, gonna get some panels for it in the back. Working on it. We're getting there. All right, guys, new day. Back out in the shop again. They're still working on that rig. But uh, I want to show you, well, let me back up here. I want to show you not many times do we get one of our walking floors up in the air. And that's a really cool thing with these lifts. We're able to get a walking floor, a trailer, any trailer we want, we can lift it right up in the air. So here it's on jack stands. This is something that we're working on, and I'll show you what we're doing. But got two jack stands back there and two here and you can see how it's getting utilized with this piece so those two lifts will come in one on either side and pick up this takes a spot of the wheel but here they're servicing a truck so they can service a truck this is like an extra set of lifts and these stands i don't even know exactly what they are but they're definitely worth it and they're way 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 cheaper than a whole set of lifts um, so this is the trailer that we had some issues with getting unloaded. All the cylinders are over there on the floor, right there. Um, Devin's under here working on it, and I'll show you a little bit. So this is our oldest trailer. This trailer was built in, I think, March of 2012 uh, is approximate build date on it. But right in here is where these cylinders go. And these, um, you could kind of say this is the drive unit under here and a cylinder attaches to each strip here. And this attaches, this, this steel uh, piece here attaches to every other, or every third floor slat. So here's your first one, your second one, and your third one. And the cylinders, there's one cylinder for each one. And that's what walks back and forth. And what we had happen is, is uh, this one first broke out. Oh, battery's going dead. Um, the bolts broke out. All four bolts broke out on that cylinder. And then what was it, Devin, on this one, the bolts started breaking out. Yeah, this one did. So the second one, the bolts started breaking out too. And uh, the trailer was loaded. It was quite a mess. But we got, uh, we had cylinders here rebuilt. 
they're sticking them under there and get this trailer back on the road again. But this is still very nice under here and our other trailers that we had um, yeah, in, uh, in a matter of 10 years, they were shot. Whereas here, all this aluminum, these aluminum cross members make a world of difference and does not let stuff corrode and rot out like the steel did. So a little bit of a project going on, but it shouldn't be too long. It definitely makes it a lot easier when you can set it up like that and be able to work right under it. And, you know, so when we built this shop too, it was all in design, being able to have something up on stands, being able to lift it, yet still being below that big fan. Um, that fan does amazing here in the wintertime. Like I'm standing here and I can, I got a nice breeze, but the temperature, if you don't have that fan on, the temperature makes a, it's a big difference of temperature from the ceiling to the floor. All right, guys. Pal, you want to say hi to the camera? <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.